All right. I'm going to go ahead and get started. All right, so we have a lot to unpack here. All right? So what we're going to do, we're going to pick off where we left off at last week. We're going to do finish the low calculations, start on the fixed appliances, place the circuit breaker for the whole house, size the service feeder from the service box, and then some. All right. Last week, and you all recall, we actually did the general lighting load. The general lighting load consists of the plugs and the lights. That's it. There's a lot more things to cover, like the fixed appliances, the oven, the dryer. Okay, what else? Uh, a few more other things, but we'll get to those. A few more other things as we get to those. So. According to our sheet here, according to our sheet that we have here, we are on number four. So we completed number one. If y'all can pull out your standard calculation sheet, we completed number one, okay? We completed number two, we completed number three, and then we're about to approach to number four. All right, fixed appliances. What, that, what does that entail? So in article, 220.53, it explains it. So what I'm about to do is go to the NEC, the 2017 version. So article 220.53, let's see what it says. Dishwasher, you're not gonna be using fixed appliances, you know, at a full capacity of 100%. So 75%, this is for load calculation purposes, right? To the main plate rating load of the four or more appliances fastened in place, like a microwave, refrigerator, toaster, oven, etc. But not stove, electric range, generally, it's a stove, not clothes dryer. Facing because the NEC has articles dedicated for the clothes dryer, which we're going to get to in a few moments. The space heating equipment, we're going to get to that air conditioning, we're going to get to those things. But for fixed appliances for four or more, you have to use 75% in all residential dwellings, which is a house. And look, electric drives is one article below. We're not going to talk about that until we actually get to it. All right, so. You're probably wondering for this practice home that we're doing this calculation for, what appliances do we have? Let me bring that up. All right, so I'm basically going to use old reference material from like previous semesters, right? So, so number four, okay, we're going to go ahead and put these values down. It's important, okay? So. Dishwasher, DDW, that's a dishwasher. Dishwasher is rated at 1,110 uh, VA or watts. Okay, write that in. Okay, well, let me see. I think it's already. Yeah, okay. Dishwasher, okay. 1,110. Okay. TC, trash compactor, okay. TC, your trash compactor is 1,188 VA. 
Okay? GD is the garbage disposal. All right, we're going to put that for 864 BA. WH is the water heater. That's 4,500, okay? Then we have the AF, which is the attic fan. The discharge of the attic fan. It's like an exhaust fan on top of the roof. All right, that's 750. All right? Our microwave oven, gentlemen, is 900 BA. All right? Write that in. And then we have our refrigerator, which is a thousand VA. Okay? A thousand VA. Now, what we're doing now, we're basically just putting down information from the name plate for the name plate. We're not doing a circuit breaker just yet. We're gonna have to get back to the circuit breaker, but we're gonna do that later. Then basically we're just taking all the information from the name plate. Which is already given right here. Right. We're so, adding in uh, what we're doing with 2010. We're adding in. Um, we're adding in everything that you see, the first four. So yeah. we got the water heater, disposal, uh, compactor, okay, and we got a dishwasher. And then we add in the microwave oven, we add in the attic fan, and then the fridge. Yeah, the fridge, microwave, and the attic fan. Those are the three additional ones that we add in to the space right here, all right, to that space on number four. All right, you said the AF is attic fan? Yes, sir, attic fan. Okay. Now, if it's four or more, we, got, we apply 75%. How do we do that? We add all of them up, and then we take that, uh, that summation of it, and we multiply it by 75%. Okay, that's the total. So that's how we do that. Then. Okay. So let's see what that is. Ten thousand three hundred and twelve multiply him by seventy five percent. All right, I have seven thousand seven hundred and thirty four. So the total VA for number four is seven thousand seven hundred and thirty four. Now, while we own it, okay, let's see here. All right, let's go to the next one because we're going to come back. We're going to start back over at number four and we're going to figure out the circuit for, uh, for each one of those. Okay, because those are fixed appliances, they are considered dedicated circuits. And I'm explaining, probably explain now, a dedicated circuit is a circuit breaker dedicated just for that, no additional. Circuitry added to it, sole purpose is to protect the water, the sole purpose is to uh, protect the compactor, and so forth. All right? Now, number five is the dryer. Okay, I'm going to go back to that article that mentions about the dryer. Closed, I mean electric clothes dryer for housing. The load for a household electric dryer in a dwelling unit shall be either 5,000 watt VA or the main plate rating, whichever is larger for each dryer served. The use of the demand factor in table 220.54 shall be permitted, where 
two or more single drugs are supplied by a three-phase four-wire feeder or service, the total load shall be calculated on the base of twice the maximum number connected between any two phases. Kilovolt ampere shall be considered equivalent to the kilowatt per load calculated in this section. All right. All right, so I'm going to basically break the part that we basically need to understand, the first half. So all that second three phase, we ain't worried about that because it's a residential home. All right? The load for household electrical dryer in a dwelling unit shall be rated at 5,000 watts or the nameplate rating, whichever is large. For example, let's say you got a, one of those stackable dryers. And they're probably rated at 3,200 watts or 3,500 watts. The NEC says for calculation purposes, it has to be 5,000 watts. Or if the main plate on it is more than 32 or 5,000, let's say if it's 5,500, you use the number greater than, but do not go less than 5,000 watts when you calculate it, okay, for calculation purposes. The whole reason why we're calculating is to properly size our conductors so we want to undersize our conductors and burn up stuff, all right? The whole purpose of Article 220. All right? So let's figure out what our dryer size is or our watt. Okay? We're taking information from old references. All right? Let's see here. A lot of state consistent, so we'll be making up these numbers. All right. Our dryer on our nameplate was 4,800 VA. But since it's 4,800 VA, what are we going to use? 5,000. 5,000. So, fellas, number five, you're going to write down 5,000 VA. Not the name plate under 5,000. If it was more, then we'd do that value. But put 5,000 in there. Mr. Schultz, do you got another one of those calculation packets? I uh, do I, the file on them. Yes, I do. I do. I do. You want to make your guest appearance in front of the camera? Go ahead and get that one right there. I think that might be it. It might not be it. If it ain't it, no, it actually, I don't think that one is it. Yeah, I don't think so. No, it's not it. I got some one right here. Is this all we need? Is our, I looked at that too. What else do you need? Uh, oh, just go for that right now. I'll let you show that. Okay. Right, we're in the middle of a video session. I'm going to make this as clean as possible. All right? All right. So, now, we can move on. So, just before we move on, if y'all look at number five, right, Look at number five. You see where it says 70% off that to the right? That's under the neutral load. I'm going to get to that later. When we start uh, sizing like the, the service conductors and the neutral, we're going to go back on that side and actually do what it's telling us to do. So don't worry about that. Don't have, I'll get a breakdown. I'm like, oh, what's the 70% under the neutral load for? I'll break that down. All right. Now, number six, cooking equipment. Okay, cooking equipment. Now, this is the one that we have to be mindful of and understand exactly how to uh, figure out what the NEC says about cooking equipment. All right? So, the number that we have up here is 10,500. But the NEC basically says something about the cooking room. So let me go to it. All right. So number, uh, to Article 220.55. Article 220.55. Remember, when you hear the word demand factor, that basically means 
how much is basically being utilized? Is it being utilized for its full capacity? No, not necessarily, right? You're not going to have all four electrical burners on and the oven on at the same time at high uh, at the highest peak. That's basically using it 100%. You're probably going to base probably be using one burner, you know, with the oven on, unless you're doing things different. But this is the demand factor, right? So let's see. So number of appliances. Demand factor and load for household electric ranges, okay? Wall-mounted ovens, counters, etc. So since we're dealing with a normal size home, about what, 15, almost 6, 1,600 square foot, how many ovens or how many stoves are we going to probably have? One, one. One, right? So number of appliances. We're going to go to that first row. Number of appliances we're going to utilize one. But let's go back and see. So look, we got column A, B, and C. Column A say less than three and a half kilowatts. Column B says three and a half through eight and three quarters. And then column C says, hey, maximum demand kilowatt, not over 12K. We got to break it down and, and figure out what, is, or what are those particular columns are talking about. All right. So what we're going to do is go back to here. So the range is 10.5 kW. That's what's on the name. Because we're not, don't write that down. We're not, don't write it down. We gotta figure out what the NC states about. Okay? So let's go back to that. Alright, so our oven, whatever it is, are we gonna use column A? It says less than three and a half kilowatts. Ours is what? 10.5 kW? Mm -hmm. Are we gonna use column A? No. 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 Are we gonna use column B? No. 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 Okay, column C. All right, not over 12W. So we're not approaching, we're not over that threshold of 12 kilowatts. So since we're not, and we have 10,000 and a half, what we're going to say for calculation purposes? 8 kW. All right, put that down. So that's the value for the cooking appliances in section number 6. Okay, so you're going to put down. Uh, let me see here. You'll put down in column C, it was uh, 12, I'm sorry, it was uh, 10.5, and then where it says V8, total is going to put uh, 8. That's the demand factor, so that's a percentage. That's pretty much like what? 80%? Uh, I don't know. Anyway, it's not full 100%. So, right. on the, so, on the, yeah. so in C, we put one. Yeah. Out. Which one? Yeah, I see. You for column C. Yeah, so column C, what was the what was the value of the of the of 10.5. 10.5, right? 10.5. But the total for calculation purposes okay, is going to be 8 kW, and that's what that is. See? So it says maximum demand in kW. So all of these numbers, okay, if we're dealing with any one of these right here, we'll basically pick one of these and put kW behind it. So we're picking uh, 8 because we're over. Eight and three quarters. So we're gonna be using for calculation purposes eight thousand. Okay, and that's how we're gonna size our circuit breaker. All right. So we're, we're gonna get back to that last. I just wanna get through this right here so I can start doing the uh, circuit breaker. It's one of our uh, fixed appliances and for our lights and everything else. Okay. All right. Now. Number seven. All right, I got that information as well. So the AC or the heater. Let's see what this says. Article 220, I'm sorry, yeah, 220.6. All right, non coincident loads. Where it is like, unlikely that two or more non coincident loads will be in, used simultaneously, it shall be permissible to use. Only the large load that will be used at one time for calculation of total load of a feeder or service. All right, let me break that down. Non-coincident load is pretty much, gentlemen, two loads that are basically being an AC unit. You can either produce heat or you can either produce AC. Both of them are not going to be on at the same time. That's what that says. Non-coincident load. Whatever 
which one of the uh, applications pull more current, that's what you serve the calculation for. All right, that's what that means. So with that being said, let's go and figure out what size we're working with. Uh, let's see here. All right, so the AC, okay, the AC is pulling 10 kW, and the heat is pulling 15 kW. Self-explanatory, the heat is always going to pull more, fellas, because when you got a heating coil or heating element, it's going to pull a lot of current, all right? All it is on the AC is basically a, a compressor. You got a compressor that compresses the, uh, the refrigerant through the line, and then you got the blower blowing across the refrigerant coil, keeping your house cool itself. And you got your, your, your heating furnace, and you got the heating coil, you know, that produces a lot of, uh, it's heat, it's a lot of current being going, but always, uh, heat is always going to produce more heat on a dual unit type stuff. Anyway, so we got 15K for the heat, and we got 10 uh, KW for the AC. That's self-explanatory. So if you look at it, it says heating or AC, which one is the largest? Yeah. Heat. So for the heating unit, fellas, you're going to put 15 KW. I'm going to put 15 K times 100%, all right, which is 15, uh, uh, 15, uh, 15 thousand here. All right. So that's what you put. That's self-explanatory. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to disregard number eight, all right? When you disregard number eight, the largest motor, like if you had a, a well water pump or like additional motors and stuff like that, we don't have to worry about this one. We're disregarding number eight. All right. So now what I want to do, fellas, uh, hold on, before I continue, do we have any questions so far? Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to, we're still going to do the circuit breaker, but I want to get to that last. All right, so right now, I want to do a total. I haven't been keeping up with the total numbers, so maybe I have. Okay, so everything that we did from last week to what we just did, we're going to add that up. So now what we're going to do, fellas, we're going to go to our Excel spreadsheet and basically have all of the information to make sure that we're doing this right. Now, I showed you all how to do the actual um, uh, the demand factors for number two, number one, number two, number three. Okay, we did number four and everything. Let's figure out what we got. All right. Yeah. Let's see, some stuff's already in there. Let me see. Let me see if we're gonna write that okay. Get the two on one. All right. So now what I'm about to add is the lungs. Okay. Is it a lot of smaller appliances? Okay. Small appliances. Okay. Two lungs. All right. All right, electric dryer, I'm going to put one, okay, and we put 4,800, because that's what was the main plate, but what it does automatically, oh, 48, 4.8, my bad, 4.8, look what it did automatically on the TV screen, it changed it to 5,000 watts, okay, All right, we're going to go to the electric range. Fixed electric space heating or air condition. So what we're going to do is uh, put down the, the size of the, uh, the heat, which was what, 15 k Okay. All right, so when you get to applying glow on your Excel spreadsheet, if y'all use this, all right, so what we're going to do is uh, 
Just go through the motions and tell you how to do it. <clears throat> so the first one we have is water heater. I'm going to find water heat. <coughs> Our water heater was what? 7,734. All right. So, all right, let me, let me downscale on this. Downscale on y'all Excel. So what I'm going to do, we're going to do the old-fashioned way. We're going to actually calculate the everything. This is all ears and eyes up here. We're going to calculate everything to figure out what size the service conductor is. So let me put that on the TV screen and show you what we're about to calculate. Okay? First two questions says, what size main breaker? What size service conductor? All right, we're gonna answer that. We're gonna answer all of them eventually, but let's figure it out. All right, so let's see. Got a lot of calculations. So y'all are calculating that with me. I mean, just uh, look. All right, so. All right, so I'm going to add number one, two, three, all the way down to number one and number seven, okay? All right, so for number one, okay, I have 47.88 plus number two is 4,500, okay, plus number three, the demand factor, 5201, 5201 plus number four, number four was what, 7734? Yeah. Yeah, thank you. 7734 
plus the dryer. 5,000. Thank you, sir. 5,000 plus the cooking unit is 8K. Okay. Plus the heating unit. 15. Thank you. All right. And yeah, you add all that up. I got 50,000. 223 BA. Now, number nine, it says conductors are permitted to be sized at 83% of the demand load if the 2120 single phase and not greater than 400 amperes. So we don't know how many amps that is, but let's figure it out. So in the home, for those electricians out there, do we have 120 or 240 or do we have both? Both. Uh, both, right? But the one that you want to utilize is the 240. 240. We're going to take that value of 50,000. 50,223. That's the VA or watts. We're going to divide him by 240. All right. So right now we're under that threshold of 400 amps. So therefore, we can use the 83%. All right. So now. We have 209.26 uh, amps that basically is going throughout this home, okay? Let me make sure I'm saying it right. Yeah, 209 amps. All right. And now, hmm, where did we go? We got to figure out something here. So 2,900 and, well, let me just say 210 amps. All right, 210 amps. Now, what we got to do, let me go to my, okay, come on, come on, I'm going Is that supposed to be like two watt? Uh, actually, that's going to be like three. Three? No, no, no. Three watt, but hold on. Let me, uh, let me make sure I'm doing it. All right, let me go to my Excel spreadsheet and let me see what I did wrong. All right, so. We did a, it was initially 1,400 square feet. Two different houses. Damn. So, <laughs> man, I, thank you for that, man, because I almost, I what I wrote down didn't match that. So okay, because okay, I remember I did yeah. 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 Okay. Jesus Christ. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So, I know we did this one that was 1,400. 1,400. It was our, we did. Uh, it's, it's just 4,200 VA instead of 4,788. Okay, even with that being said, well, I still got fifteen ninety six right here. Yeah, yeah. So that's so we use we're using this one. Yeah. That's fine. But what I need to figure out is I got fifty thousand, and I'm trying to figure out. So are we're using the number? So are we actually using this one or the original one? No, we're using this one right here. We're using this. One. I'm trying to figure out where I went wrong. Trying to find out. Hold on. Okay, we got 47.88. Okay, general lighting 920. Uh, 52.01. You got that right. You got that right. Okay, 5,000 for the wire. 8,000 for. <coughs> Thank you. 
I know what I did wrong. Y'all let me do this right. Y'all supposed to catch me. All right. So what I did was I added uh, the 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 uh, the V eight for number one and number two and number three. Remember, okay, this is a mistake. It can be made. Remember, when you do the calculations of number one, two, and three, this final number is for the GL, the general lighting level. Uh, okay. That's what I did wrong. So, so four. Yeah, so number three, when you add up one and two, and then you have to do that formula that we did last week, y'all remember yeah. the formula we did? That represents, this right here represents the GL. So therefore, number one, two, and three, once you get past number three, that's when you take this sum, and you start adding it up to number four, five, six, and so forth. So I made a mistake. All right, so let's do that. So you can see it on the TV screen. I don't want to cheat us. I want us to make sure we're doing it the right way. All right, that's what I did wrong. I kept adding and adding. All right, so 5201 plus 5,000 plus 8,000. Let me say what they are. 5201 is the general lighting. 5,000 is for the dryer. Okay, 8,000 is for the range of the electrical oven. 15K is for the, um, the heater. 7734 or 7734 is the demand factor, 75% of all fixed appliances, which adds up to 40,935. All right, now we take that value, okay, and we divide him by 240. Okay, now I have 100. That's full. I was about to say that's, that's kind of high. That's too high. All right. 170 amps, 170 and a half amps is what is being required to serve for this house. That's at 1,500 or 1,600 square foot. Now we need to figure out what size surface conductor, then the size main breaker, and everything else. All right, so now, on this paper that you have, we can also go into the actual NBC, but this is a reference, this is a quick reference right here. All right. All right. So 170.5 amps. Two watt wire. What size do you want to use? Two watt. Two watt. Okay. The size of the service conductor. So you might ask, what is the service conductor, Mr. Shield? The service conductor is those two wires that come into your service counter. These are the service conductors. All right, that size is going to be 2 ot. All right, put that on your notes somewhere. We're just taking notes and everything, so we know what to do when we do our final lab, our final part of the project. All right, so we got 2 ot. All right, so it says, what size is the main breaker? Let's go back and see what size is the main breaker for that. 
Okay? What's I have to say? 175. 175 amp circuit breaker. Right there to the left. It says size, circuit size of amp. 175. So that's going to be our size of our circuit breaker for that home. Okay? So but typically, um, homes are normally like 200. I, yeah, they're 200, 200, 150, mine is 125. It, it depends. But let's go and see exactly where. Oh, hold on. Article, fellas, do we go to to size our uh, circuit breaker? Article two forty dot six. Y'all remember that? Two forty dot six. Y'all don't remember that from uh, okay, no. All right, two forty dot six. All right, overcurrent protection. Y'all remember this table right there? All right, so one seventy five uh, is in there, so we can select a one hundred seventy five circuit breaker. All right, let's continue with those questions that they have for us. Okay. All right. So now the third question is what size service neutral conductor? What size service neutral conductor? All right. But before we do that, I want to see what we're doing with our illustration. Let's see what's going on. All right. Oh. So, it says that the total calculated demand below is 171, which we calculated, but it's telling us to use a 200, a 200 amp circuit breaker. All right? 200 amp circuit breaker. 175, 200, we'll go with 175. Anyway, 175, we can stick with 175 because 171 is still in that threshold, so we're good. Alright. Now we gotta find out what size our neutral conductor is gonna be. We gotta go look for this part of So for the neutral wire, okay, so if you look at number one, uh, not number one, but number three, when you it says uh, apply the demand factor. So we're already figured out that 707, uh, 7,734 7, is the VA for the line, and then for the neutral, okay, for the neutral, it says the neutral VA, okay, for the neutral VA for the number three is going to be the same, okay. When you go down to number four, no, I, I apologize, I messed up, my, my bad. Number three is a 5201 for the VA, and then the neutral is the same size, okay? So number four, all right, so number four, we figured out 7,734, all right? So let's go down to number five. Number five, it says 70% of the neutral. So let's see what the uh, NEC says about the neutral, 
Okay, y'all see this right here on the TV screen? It says permitted reduction. And let me find out what, what it actually says. Okay, here we go. Article 220.61. Feeder or service load, service neutral load. The feeder or service neutral load shall be the maximum unbalanced of the load determined by the article. The maximum unbalanced load shall be the maximum net calculated load between the new conductor and any one of the ungrounded conductors. That's a whole lot of stuff being said in that. All right, I'm going to get down to it. Okay. B, permitted reduction. All right, this is what we need to figure out. A service or a feeder supplying the following load shall be permitted to have an additional demand factor of 70% applied to the amount in Article 220.61b1, or portion of the amount, okay, a feeder uh, of service supplying household electric ranges, Walmart and other, all right, can be reduced to 70%, okay? <coughs> Listen, all right. So basically what they're saying is that your, your, your oven, your ranges, they can be reduced, and you can reduce the neutral conductor for that circuit breaker for the oven, not for the entire system, not for the service conductor. It says the uh, conductors for the range or the oven, etc. All right, and that's what they're basically saying. So it says that the feeder neutral load shall be the maximum unbalanced of the load determined by the article. The maximum unbalanced load shall be the maximum net calculated between the neutral and any one of the unbalanced. So basically what they're saying, fellas, is that the ungrounded, the conductor, and the neutral, it needs to be the same. But for the oven, I don't know why, but the oven can be reduced to 70%. That's basically what they're saying. All right? So how we do that is basically we add up everything on the neutral side. So all of the numbers that we calculated, we, um, I don't know, I might be saying this. So the dryer and the cooking equipment can be reduced on the neutral side, and just for the circuit breaker. So when we size our, uh, our wire for our dryer and cooking, we got to size it for the hot wire and we got to size it for the neutral. Can that be the both the same value? Yes, it can. But when it comes down to a lot of money being spent, right? So let's say for the dryer, dryers are typically size six gauge wire. They use a six. Sometimes it could be eight to six. Those are thick wires, right? But you can reduce the load on the neutral side of your dryer and your cooking range, and it might go up to a size 10 gauge wire, right? By a reduction of 70%, or not 70%, 30%, but 70% demand factor. That's saving you money for the, for the neutral wire. When you start getting to like eight gauge and six gauge and four gauge, y'all know the ones that do, that's some expensive copper wire. All right? But they allow you to reduce that because they know that you're not going to be using 100% of an oven. You're not going to be using 100% of a dryer. Okay? That's what they're basically saying. Engineers, electrical engineers, they wrote this stuff. All right? That's what that means. All right? So now, we put up the size of the neutral. The neutral wire um, is going to be the same. The neutral uh, conductor is going to be too hot because we size the the, the hot wire of the service conductor. The service conductor was too hot, and now the neutral conductor is going to be too hot as well. All right, so write that down. Too hot. All right, the next one. Okay, now we're going to size the bonding conductor. The bonding conductor. That's why I drew this. That's why I drew this here. All right, so. Now we're introducing something new that we did not learn in NEC. The bonding conductor. You might ask, what is that? Okay? The bonding conductor, gentlemen, is the conductor that bonds the neutral conductor thus far 
to the grounding bus bar. Okay? The new trooper of, this is the grounding. Okay, that's why it's green. You have a bonding screw that is required, that is code. All right? This conductor, this is the neutral bus bar. That right there is the bonding conductor. And I know in Article 250, which is the biggest article, I gotta go find it, but I know off the top of my head that that size conductor should be four gauge, nothing less. And let's go find it. I have to find it so you all can help me. All right? So this right here is not on here, okay? What we do in those questions are not on here, but we want to write them down somewhere because starting next week, I'm going to tell you exactly how we're going to put this project together. All right. So let me go to Article 250. Biggest article that it is. All right, I'm going to go to a table. It's three tables, all right? We're looking for the bonding conductor. All right, this is the biggest article in any, any scene. I'm going to go to a couple of tables here. All right, table 25066. Grounding electroconductor for alternating current system. Oh, did that sound quite right? Yeah, we'll come back to it if it is. Table 250.102C1. Grounded conductor main bonding jumper system bonding jumper supply side bonding jumper for AC system. Does that sound like the table that we want to go to? Yes, that is the table that we should go to. All right, now, now Mr. Panda, listen up. You're gonna be a, you may want to ask me here what I got to do. Size of the largest ungrounded conductor or equivalent area for parallel conductors. Size of the largest ungrounded, that's the service conductor we calculate, okay? Or equivalent area for parallel conductors, all right? So what size was our service conductor, fellas? Two watts. Two watts. So let's find copper. Of course, we're using copper. Copper, copper, copper. Two watts, all right? Size of the grounding or bonding jumper, all right? Boom, I told you, four out, four. Not four out, my bad, four. So two out, you go across, size of the grounding or the bonding jumper that I had the green tape around it, it's going to be number four, okay? Now mind you, all these numbers might change when I give you all your fixed numbers for the final graph, all right? All right, now, let me show you another table, another table. This is another one that we highly use as electrical engineers or electrical technicians or electricians. Minimum size equipment grounding conductors for grounding waste weight and equipment. Equipment is your AC unit, motors, stuff that are equipment, all right? And then you go off of the size of the circuit breaker. All right, for example, like our heater. When we figure out the size of the circuit breaker for our heater, then we go and basically figure out the size of the grounding conductor. All right, so I'll get to that later, though. All right, so there's three tables that we use. All right, let me go figure out the next question that we got to figure out. All right. All right, so we did the neutral conductor, bonding conductor, Size of the grounding conductor. All right. So now you got the grounding rod that goes into the earth. All right. Ground clamp, ground rod. Then you have the grounding conductor. Yes. All of this is tied in. Metal, whatever like that. The grounding conductor. Let's figure out the grounding conductor. So we got to go back to Article 250, where we were just previously at. All right. Well, we're right back. I mean, we at the same one. Table 250, 122. Minimum size equipment. 
grounding conductors for grounding raceways and equipment. All right, let me just make sure that that's not the same one that I need to go to. Hold on. I'm going to go back to the two previous tables. That says ground dead. Now, what's the difference, fellas, between ground dead and grounding? Grounding is a non current carrying conductor. That's typically the green conductor or the bare conductor. Ground dead is the neutral. Y'all remember that? All right? Ground dead is the neutral, which is the white. Okay? All right, remember that? All right, so it's not this one right here. So we ain't gonna worry about that article. Let me go back to the first one. Okay, this one right here. Grounding electroconductor. Grounding electroconductor from RK. Okay. Grounding electroconductor. Let me make sure that's the same thing. So the electrode is that rod right there, and the ground beam conductor is that. So that will be the one. Okay. So you can get confused, but I think the numbers are still the same though. So we had a size two watt, a size four for the wire, but let's figure out if that's the same. Let's go back to the one, the two fifty one twenty two uh, table. Not that one. That's not it. That's a quit, and our house is not even quit. All right, so it's the other one. So, what size are we going to use, fellas? What size is grounding? Four. 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 All right, size four grounding. It's the same thing as the, uh, the bonding jump. Usually, oh, one. Well, Yes, it's the same. But they actually separated because the ground beam doesn't carry current. The ground it does. Now, you all are just jot down information. I ain't have nobody ask, hey, Mr. Shields, why these wires are the same size and why you got two different tables, one that says ED, one that says ING? Let me explain. All right, grounded wire is the return of the neutral path. All right? You send out just like a baseball. <laughs> Batter hits it. You gotta come back where he started from, just like current. All right, current starts from the source, it goes out to the low, and it has to return on the neutral. All right, so that ground dead or that bonding jump is tied into the neutral, right? It's tied into the neutral, so therefore we know that current does not carry or delivers into the grounding wire because it doesn't carry current. But if there is a fault, if there is a fault where the hot wire is touching the neutral wire. That current has to go somewhere. And let me go on the TV screen. And what does it have to go, fellas? Into the ground. ground. So that's just like a relief valve. Well, let, let's say a straw. We're going to use an analogy, right? So let's say you got uh, a boiler that's producing hot water, right? But you have a relief valve at the top. And the relief valve is, is a certain size. So therefore, the pressure is immense. It discharges the water, whatever it is, the pressure, up the top, my bad, and then it discharges the exceptional amount of water through a pipe. If you have a straw, and you got a straw that you, you know, drinks water, whatever out of, and you hook it up to a boiler, what do you think that straw is going to happen? It's going to explode, right? Because the straw is too small. That's why you size the grounding conductor the same size as the neutral. So if there's an excessive amount of current that's being this chart because of an electrical short circuit, guess what? It goes through here, straight to the ground. And we just put a, a 14 gauge wire that we've been dealing with all throughout this program, motor control. What do you think is going to happen to that small 14 gauge wire? It's going to burn. It's going to burn. It's going to burn. It's gonna burn. <laughs> and you don't want that, right? That's why you have to size that grounding conductor I've got a question. to that neutral conductor. Does that make sense? All right. Usually on houses that we build, I don't know if it's up to code number two, but we usually use like six bears and all that for like. Yeah! yeah. You, you can use, yeah. You can use six bears. Why do you use six bears? I'm going to show you why. 
Because according to the table, let me go up, let me go back. Because typical homes are one, like my home, I got a one gate. I got, yeah, it's a one gate. I know my, and my mom is like a, a two gate. But look at here, right? Mm. One gauge, That's one right. gauge is normally six. Yeah. But for the purpose of what we're doing, calculate. Yeah, we just yeah. calculate. Okay. Yeah, six gauge. Okay. Which two is easy? You can still oversize. It doesn't matter. Oh yeah, you can oversize. But I'm telling you, when you start getting to these, you ain't gonna try to. You ain't gonna want to oversize it. You could, but if your box is deep like that, hey. You like we just oversize everything. We just yeah. Like yeah, like we oversize everything, but that's a lot of money though, yeah. and you lose a profit. If I'm a mass electrician over your company like that, and I see you just going out there and I give you the credit card and don't live in, you just spinning and oversize the joint no calculation, we'll have to come back and sit down and, and discuss it. Yeah. All right. All right, next one. Who does not understand what we're doing? Everybody good and clear. All right, go on. Enclosure type, depending on if you can, uh, the service panel is inside or outside. I didn't even tell you how well, most of these homes are inside now. All right, nevertheless, let's go to it. Let me go to the article that go, I mean, that talks about the enclosure type. That picture that we're, you're looking at with those questions, do you have that send no, I, I had I had everybody to take a picture of them. Oh, okay. and I didn't send it, but I, you'll get it before we do the paper. All right. Okay. All right, gentlemen, enclosure types. All right. One t uh, Table 110.28 is found in Article 110, the requirement for lift installation. All right, so typically, yeah. Enclosure types are done in the inside, uh, in the garage somewhere. So that's what we want to do. We want to do it keep it in the garage unless I want to, if I say, hey, we're going to put it outside. Anyway, for outdoor use and for indoor use, all right? We're going to go and look at the indoor use. So this is pretty much uh, like all of the different styles of enclosures. So you have like one, two, four, four, if you have that label on the actual panel itself, okay? The ones that have X marked to it, on it, that basically means that these styles or these particular types can withstand these, all of these are different panels, right? Made of, uh, they're structured or manufactured in a certain kind of way to go. Incidental contact with the enclosed equipment. Now, incidental contact, if you bump a toy, the car door hits it, whatever, right? All of them can withstand it, all right? All of them can withstand falling dirt. All right? Now, look at number one. Number one starts to fade is hot. All right? So, number one, falling liquids and liquid splashing, right? So, if you got you a counter, like I have in my garage, I have shelves and whatnot like that, but I don't have it above my uh, service panel. But if I have some liquids above my service panel, and if it was a number one style or type, this cannot withstand any falling liquids or light splash, all right? But the rest of them do. So as you progress, as each um, <coughs> element of type of condition can uh, heighten, you know, less and less ser uh, service panels can prevent from, uh, prevent from being harmed from them. So like, let's look at here. These left these over here. So, oil and coolant seat. Oil and coolant seat, the only types that can handle that is 12, 12K and 13, all right? And then you got only one that does prolonged submission <laughs> underwater is six feet. I get this real close. All right, so inside a house, eh, you know, maybe I might want to go with two through 13, but it depends on how much it costs, all right? I haven't done my research on the, the surface type panel, but when you gentlemen actually do the actual final draft, 
you go here and you select your type. All right. You select your type. It can be most I've seen is 4x. Oh, you say 4x? Thank you for chiming in. All right, 4x. So that's the one. So is that for a residential home or outside or inside? Because I think hold on, hold on, hold on. Because I think these same panels. You see, you got 4x on outside as well. All right, 4x on outside as well. This is outside. All right. So you say you seen 4x? 4x if it's in the garage and then and then two or three if it's like in a mud room or something like that. In a, in a what? Mud room or something. Oh, like mud room. Okay, yeah, I didn't talk about. Okay, there you go. All right. So that right there was for the knowledge on the selection of the service panel. I'm not really too sad on it, but there we go. Close it right there. But this right here is basically stating the enclosure type for outdoor, but I'm just saying it's going to be indoor. So you're going to basically choose, okay? I'm not going to say, hey, it's going to be falling dirt or, or splashing liquids around, so you might want to, no. This is basically to get you guys familiar where this is located and the different kinds of service panels. Now, probably next week, I'm going to probably go downstairs and show you all the service panels in the motor controls or in the NEC just to give you an idea of, the, of where it's located at. And after that, because I want to get everything done. Thank you for your help. All right. Uh, let's see. Okay, next. Okay. All right. All right, so we answer all of those questions. So I got a question to ask you, folks. All right, do y'all want to take a breather or y'all want to keep going? All right, let's keep going. Can you go to the bathroom real quick? Yeah, I mean, yeah. If y'all need to take a bathroom break, go ahead. All right, I'll pick up in like three to five minutes. All right, so go ahead and take a bathroom break. Five minutes, I'll, um, not no 10 minutes, but five minutes.
AC slash heat dryer oven or stove stove okay. I know water heat is now they come 120 but I didn't work on a bucket home with a 240 with it being high like that 4500 that's a 240 so that's gonna be water heat Pretty much new homes are 120 or tankless water heaters. I have a tankless in my house, but you'll come across with whatever you come across. Alright. Uh, let's see here. The dishwasher. The dishwasher is only 120. Did you come across, Mr. Clever? Did you ever come across a 240 dishwasher? No, no. You don't come across it. No. Mm -hmm. Okay, no, no. Okay. Okay, scratch that. Okay. Alright, everything else. Make sure, okay, AC, dryer, stove, water heater. Am I missing anything else for, uh, for 240? No, I don't believe I am. Welder. <laughs> really? Yeah, I didn't. <laughs> All right. That's if you're doing a custom home, but we, it's not a custom yeah, home. All right. Everything else, okay, we're going to do, okay? So now, the, okay, so we're going to, so this is water. Two, four, six, eight. That occupies eight spaces. So we're already down to 24. Okay? All right. Let's see here. Uh, okay. My pitch washer. Okay. Trash. Garbage disposal. Okay. Water plug. My attic fan. Okay. All right. Microwave. Okay. 
foot or six inches? Uh, uh, six foot, right? Oh, six foot, you're right. Okay. Yeah, six inches. Seven inches. How's that way home or what? <laughs> yeah, six foot. Six foot. But well, anyway, all lunges have to have a DLCM. All right? That's basically what they're saying. So, a laundry circuit breaker dedicated the plug on it. Now, what it says about light? Let me see. Um, dedicated plug on Okay. It says switch light. So, plugs are the plug. Are on a dedicated for the laundry and on a bathroom if there's more than one. But if there's only one bathroom, the lights, the attic fan, and everything can be put on them. But you have to do your due diligence of calculating to see if all the current is being met to the 20 amp breaker for the bathroom if there's only one bathroom. All right? All right, I just want to go over that. Now, let's go back. Okay? All right, so who, who last week actually did this here? Who actually took their time out to section this home out like that? Anybody? That's the third one? Or? No, you remember last week I said, hey, y'all go ahead and finish up and uh, size the circuit. I'm not size, but I said calculate or, or figure out. Because you remember what I said? I said, it's your preference. It's your preference how you put the home. Like you can put, you don't want to put the whole lights on the circuit breaker. All the lights in the house, no. That, that doesn't make any sense. All right, you want to section it out. All right, so let's see. Let's break it down into quarters, okay? How about that? All right? I tried that, it didn't work. It did? Uh, not for me. All right, so let's see. Let's see. All right. So you got four quarters right here. All right, let me see how many circuit breakers we have. We have 32, okay? You got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay? You got 16. I got 16 left? Yeah, All right, 16, thank you, thank you. So we got 16 breakers left. So therefore, when you got 16 spaces left, you figure out, hmm, can you put, like, can you dissect it more than the four quarters that I'm about to do? Yes, because we got 16. We already accounted for the, the double fold breakers, right? We already accounted for that. And typically, I forgot to also say this. Uh, on the double fold breakers, you want to group them, all right? You don't want to spread them out and have them mix and match. You always want to group them. If they're going to be on the left hand side, make sure they're at the top left, all right? If they're on the left hand side at the bottom, make sure they're, they're at the bottom. But you always want to start off like three top to left, okay? So if all of your double fold breakers are on the right hand side, Put them on the right hand side. I didn't see, I didn't done work where you have a double pole, you have a group of them, and you have a single pole in, in between, and then just throw the last mile, and they be like, hey, I want to add this right here to my system, and it requires a double pole, but the last space is only one uh, space, and I can't even put a double pole break in it because somebody didn't take their time to individually stack all the singles on one side and the doubles on one side. So well, therefore, it could be two, four, six, it'll be a number instead of an odd number and you ask for a double pole and you ain't got no space. Anyway, I digress. I'm just saying. It takes a lot of thinking to do this the right way. You can do it any kind of way, get done with it and go about your job, I mean go about your business and start and do the other job. But when you are uh, 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 you take pride in your work and you want to make sure that your name spread because your name and your business is a brand. You have a brand behind you. You doing this right here? You want to make sure you do this at the top T, at the you know, so you can actually have your name spread throughout the county, the community, or wherever you're doing work. So therefore, it can spread. So it's just important stuff. All right. So let's see. We have 16 left. All right. We're to Mr. Rob. We have 16 left. So let me see. Okay. And what I did, I did not account for the general light. No lights. No all plugs. All right. So we got 16 spaces. Okay. Ah, man. This is the part that you got to finish. All right. Okay. Now, you can put all of the lights and plugs, okay, on one circuit breaker. Or, you can put all of the lights in this, okay, let me put quadrant one. Quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, 
and quadrant four. One, two, three, four. All right. So quadrant one. Okay. Let me see. I don't want to put all the lights in the plugs on them. Hey, hell, why not? Okay. Let's see if we can do that. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six. Six lights. Okay. Seven. Eight. Okay. Nine. Okay. Above that other light. Right here? Yeah. No, that's the slope. Oh. It's already accounted for. All right. So I got nine. Okay. So each light, I, I put it on the board. What did I, what did I do? Uh, my lights there are LED. All right. All right. So all of these lights are pulling 70 milliamps. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five. All right. That ain't nothing. I know it ain't nothing. So five times zero point zero seven equals thirty-five. Well, three hundred fifty. Is that right? You got six lights. You got six lights. I do. Yeah. Two, four, three, two, three. Oh yeah. Okay. Damn. Okay. I guess I'm gonna get down here too. <laughs> times, okay, LED, 70 milliamps, point zero seven. okay, I got 420 milliamps, I got the same? Okay, yeah. all right, so we got 420, we haven't even broken a half an inch, okay, all right, half an inch, so each plug, right, each plug, quarter is one, this is a representation for circuit breaker, one, okay, two, three, one more by the show on the left. Right here? Yeah. No, that's the plug. Oh, that's the stove. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, you're pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Okay. One, yeah, the three. two, three. All right. So three times, where is it? 1.5. Okay. Three times 1.5 equals 4.5 plus, so we're not even at five amps. So let's do that. So quadrant one, okay. Quadrant one circuit breaker. I'm gonna put Q1. Q1 GL. I'm gonna put GL because that's the general light. I put light and plug on that one. Alright. Quadrant number two. Alright. So we don't have to worry about the we don't have to worry about the, uh, the bathroom. Plug because that's all on one that's already accounted for. Now the laundry, this is the laundry. This, this, no, this is, yeah, that was the laundry. I remember I erased out. That. that was the laundry right there. Yeah. All right. So the laundry, it says that the plugs got to be dedicated on a circuit and the lights cannot. Hmm. So let's go ahead and make that easy. Mm -hmm. Already got that laundry. Did I got to do all that stuff? Yeah. Yes, I do. But I just got to make sure that light right here. That light right there goes with the rest of them. Because in the article that y'all have, it says only plugs, only plugs for a laundry can be on a dedicated laundry circuit. The light's gonna have to be somewhere else, probably with the rest of the stuff. Okay, but it's still on the quadrant two. All right, let's go ahead and account for quadrant two. All right, we got one, two lights, three, four, five, six. I don't even have to do no calculation. Let me just put quadrant two for as long. All right, quadrant two, okay. Okay, you see, so I'm working with, uh, that's two, so I got 14 left, so we good. Yeah. All right, quadrant three, how many do you have? Let's see, so we're going to, we got one, two, uh, a little plug first, okay, my bad. Okay. So let's see how we're going to do this here right now. We're going to put this, what is this? This is the one. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put that all on quadrant three or all on quadrant four, or do I want to split it up? Split it. Okay, let's split it. All right, so we got one, two, three, okay, four, five, six, seven, okay, Guess what? I forgot to put a god thousand plug in the backyard. You gotta have a you gotta you gotta have a plug in the back of the front. I forgot. Damn. Let me see. 
forgot about that. Let me start back over. All right, you gotta have a plural and a variable. They gotta be GFCI. All right, GFCI. GFCI. I almost forgot about that. Okay, let me start back over, fellas. All right, quarter three. All right, I have one. Okay, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight times one point five. Yeah, I'm already at twelve now. So we know that I'm gonna have to do just the plug alone with a twenty amp breaker. I'm working with twenty. Yeah, we're working with twenty amp. So all of our breakers are twenty amp. You can go with fifteen, but we're gonna do twenty because most of the homes have twenty amp. Mm -hmm. Only GE General Electric they do fifteen amp, but everything else is twenty. All right. So right now I have eight. Receptacles, okay, in quadrant three that's already pulling 12 amps. We got a 20 amp breaker. Let's see if we can put the rest of these lights on them. Let's see, okay. So we got a ceiling fan, okay. The ceiling fan, what did I say the ceiling fan was going to be? I didn't say, did I? Okay, okay, can we pull up the old information? Okay, 75 watts. 75 watts is the ceiling fan. 75 watts. All right. So 75, let me figure it out. So remember, we had 12 amps, just the plugs. Okay. 75 divided by 120 gives us 625 million. Let me write that down. Fan equals 625 million. Okay. All right. So the fan. One. Second fan. We got two. Three. For the light. Okay. All right. So we got two fans. Point six two five times two. One point two five plus a light. Plus that 0 0.7. And I'm glad I call you back. Plus 0 0.7. Alright, so I'm at 132 plus 12. I'm at 1232. Alright, so I should be good. Alright. So for this right here, quadrant three, guess what? I can go ahead and put the breaker quadrant there. I can put all of these fans and this light, backyard light, and all of these plugs that we accounted for, okay, on quadrant three. So good. Quadrant three, GL, okay? Seven, eight, nine, 
1.5 is 15 amps. So we're going to need another breaker because 15 amps, it trips at, uh, it trips at uh, 80%. And 15 amps of 20 is 16, which is right along that threshold. But you don't want to do it like that. So we got enough space. So guess what, fellas? Quadrant 4, okay? So we're going to put quadrant 4 receptacles. Put receptacles. Even though receptacles and lights fall on the GM, but I'm gonna just dedicate this for receptacles. Receptacles. Okay? And then other quadrant four is for the what, fellas? Lights. Lights. Alright, let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. No, that's that's just yeah, 14. So we're good. Because you remember, 16 is, if we had 16 on one side, we'd be screwed, right? More than that. Got 32. So you know, 16 plus 16, 16 on one side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought you counted the same. Yeah, I did. I counted uh, 14. 2, 4, 6, 8. So how many we got left? 16. Uh, Space. 20. Plenty. Yeah, we got plenty. All right. So, woo! Now we just filled up the space. We didn't even size the, the circuit breakers for the two pole and for the microwave, oven, and we haven't done that. Right now it's what, two, four, like I said, it, it takes three weeks to go through this stuff. All right, so how do we feel right now? So, so, good question, right? The fixed appliances, like those fixed appliances, fixed those appliances, values, yes. they're going to stay the same. Yes. They're going to, nothing is going to change. The only thing that's going to change is already in your document is that empty uh, template. I think it's what, 50 by 30, 60, yeah, it's something. It's yeah, that's the square footage is going to change. And when you guys put your customary plugs and lights and oh, stuff, okay. that's where it comes to play of what I'm showing. Okay. So the numbers are not going to change. I'm talking about like, the size of the oven, the size of the right. heater, oh, okay. that's going to stay the same. Right. The only thing is the plug and lighting. Yeah, the lighting, how many lights did you put, how much light you put, and the uh, square foot. Okay. Square foot. All right. All right, so let me see. Okay. Let me see. I think Mr. Should, Mr. Should, you said you'll send this out, this picture out too, because it would be nice for me to make it up. Yeah, yeah. Y'all yeah. 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 took a picture yeah. of this last week, right? No, nah, not this one. Uh, oh, yeah, nah, 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 it's TV Okay. Yeah. All right. Before we leave, I'm gonna make sure. Just like the amps and everything. Yeah. Just yeah. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take care, y'all. Yeah. I'm gonna leave this over here too because I'm trying to think. We, we so we filled out the space. We got the space, right? Now this is the space. So we utilized 14 that came down to right here, and we utilized about eight, which is right up in that percentage. All right. We answer these questions right here, fellas. We answer that. Okay. Okay, um, now all of this information right here that I, is basically the size of the circuit breaker for each one. And I'm going to start on that next week. How that sound? That's pretty good. Okay, okay. So next week is the last week that I hit everything. All right, I'm not going over to GL unless you ask me after class or whatever like that. GL, all that stuff is done. We touch base on the... Fixed appliances, the, the dryer, the oven, we ask all of those, we answer all of those questions. The last thing we're doing next week is sizing the circuit breaker for everything on here. So let me put that on the board. So Shield, for our like lights and stuff like that, can we actually go see what each one actually actually pulls and then go off of there of like what we're gonna size our stuff? Oh, 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 that's a, that, I gotta, I'm gonna have to break that question down. Hold on quick. So, let me explain what we're going to do next week. We're going to size the circuit breakers, and we're going to size the conductors for each circuit, okay? So, like, for the quadrants, the quadrants that we broke down, that's going to be easy peasy 14 gauge. But when you start doing the uh, laundry room and the kitchen, when you're doing residential kitchen, it has to be at least 12 gauge water. You can't do 14 gauge, that's just an eating sink. But anyway, we're going to size and the bathroom. Bathroom is also a 12 gauge and lunch. All right, but we're gonna size how much current that is, and we're gonna determine the size of the breaker and the size of the conductor. So let me put that on the board so I won't forget. Mm -hmm.
inside the breaker. For each circuit. Okay. Size conductor. What is next Friday? What is that day 26? Thank you. Okay. And I encourage you all to take a picture of this right here. Take a picture of what they have on the TV screen. Can you just email it to us? Yeah, I, I can't. Take a picture of the dude. No, the reason, reason why I say take a picture because I know Mr. Ismail, the other instructor I have, he does use this. He does utilize this board, and he might erase that. Because I'm about to take a picture of that because I don't want to figure out what did I ask. I don't want to be asking him here. What did I say? When's your tutorials? Huh? When's your tutorials again? Um, Thursday morning, get back to something. No, no, no. It's actually. Uh, what, did, what did I tell you guys? I think you told me like Thursday morning, or something like that. I don't remember what it was like. No, it was at, it was, at, it was uh, between eleven on Thursday. Um, <laughs> You're, you don't have a, your impact drill will not take up the tires. Yeah, well. yeah it, it's going to be. Just email me. Just, yeah, I'll just, I'll just, just email me. I mean, I can go over this video. The video will help a ton.